everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today we've got some pretty exciting news about AMC theaters. As you all know, I am a huge proponent of seeing movies on the big screen as they were originally intended until all of us can afford to have giant projectors and giant screens with the nice reclining seats in our own houses. Until that becomes a reality, movie theaters are a place where everyone, no matter where you are, no matter what your position in any society, is can all go to experience a film. Does it have its flaws? Absolutely, but hopefully at least a few of those flaws will indeed be addressed because of everything going on with COVID as AMC has now a, made a most recent announcement about their plans to reopen. Before we get into that, I did want to make sure I made uh, a shout out to uh, an actor, Ian Holm, uh, who of course has been known for films like Lord of the Rings where he played Bilbo Baggins, even more so and even further back in his career, of course he was a star in Alien as well. Very, very talented actor, but lived to the long age of long old age of 88, which is very rare, I feel, in our modern culture to live that long. So he obviously had a very long life. He obviously had a very fulfilling life as well. And so obviously thoughts and prayers go out to his family. And of course, we pray for the repose of his soul. Uh, and again, big fan of Lord of the Rings franchise here and of course of Alien as well. So uh, sad to hear this news, but hopefully he is going to his eternal reward and so that we can have some sense of joy about this. But diving now back into the news, AMC Theaters indeed has now unveiled a plan to reopen during COVID. So of course, all the major theater chains have now made official plans. Of course, we know that Cinemark was the first to do so. They, this week actually, will start to be opening up their own theaters. Of course, it's going to be a series of phases where they reopen. So just because you live near a Cinemark does not mean that it's going to open this coming week, but it does mean that the opening process will happen very soon. So the first phase of Cinemark starts this week around the 23rd, 24th. Of course, with the ultimate goal, Cinemark has made clear to have all of their theaters open by the end of July so that they can be ready for the brand new film, Tenant, which will be the second, technically the second uh, biggest film to come out since COVID, since technically Mulan, which comes out a week earlier than Tenet, is officially the earliest one, though, as I said before, do not be surprised if Disney decides to, it could have already happened at this point for all I know, do not be surprised if they are the ones that decide to move their movie date as well so that they don't have that first official movie to be released. But let's go ahead and read the article provided to us by Variety.com. It says here, AMC Theaters, the world's largest exhibitor, has unveiled plans to reopen after, after COVID forced it to close its more than 600 venues in the U.S. for nearly four months. Again, they own well over, I think, a thousand theaters across the world. Of course, they are the largest chain here in the United States, Regal being second, Cinemark being third. So to have them now in the game, especially with their financial straits and their financial situation, things are still looking very very, very hairy about whether or not they'll actually make it out of all of this. I would say it'll probably be about a year or so when, you know, they actually start to have to pay bills again, when anything that they were given a break on finally expires or goes away. That's when the chickens will come home to roost, and that will determine whether they just close a bunch of theaters, file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, or just have to close altogether. Uh, the company is expected to resume operations in 450 of those locations out of the 600 on July 15th and expects to be almost fully operational by the time that Disney's Mulan debuts on July 24th and Warner Brothers Tenet bows on July 31st. So again, the vast majority of their theater locations will be opened on July 15th. It'll be very interesting to see what parts of the country it's open in. I imagine that New York will probably not have too many, at least as far as in New York City is concerned. Concerned. California is obviously a giant question mark, especially in those major cities. But seeing that those markets together combine for what 10 to 30 percent of the entire share of box office receipts, those are definitely very important areas for any theater chain and any studio for that matter to try and get the most amount of change they can get out of any given movie. But still very exciting to see dates be put onto paper. And with a large number of 450 screens, which I think is a huge. Again, a huge collection of their theaters. I expected it might have been a little bit smaller and they might have been testing things out. But committing to 450 is a very large number. And I imagine that at the very least, the AMC near me or one of the AMCs near me will probably be included in that location. Though, of course, this all is going to be dependent upon what country or rather what state you're in. Obviously, with their other theaters across the world, what country you're in and the various regulations that are also in place. As a part of that process, AMC is reducing its seating capacity in order to help people social distance. It is implementing 
implementing new cleaning procedures, placing hand sanitizing stations throughout its theaters, and encouraging contactless and cash-free concessions. We did not rush to reopen, AMC CEO and President Adam Aaron said in an interview with Variety. There were some jurisdictions in some states, such as Georgia and Texas, that allowed people to reopen theaters in mid-May. We opted to remain closed so we could give the country time to get a better handle on corona. We wanted to use this time to figure out how to best open and how to do so safely. AMC's competitors Regal and Cinemark announced their own plans to resume business earlier this week, targeting a similar mid-July time frame for when they expect to be fully operational. So as you can see, all the major theater chains are now finally going into play. And even though there is indeed indications that there might be a second spike in cases, most especially because, not not because as the media might try and tell you, because everyone's trying to go back to work as usual and, and, and companies are reopening, etc., probably has more to do with the damn riots that have been going on across the country. But of course, that remains for a totally different video altogether. But even if there is this another major case, even if we do see uh, some dire situations happen from it, I can't imagine that any of these major companies are going to go through the same thing they've done for the past three months, because at that point, it truly will be unsustainable. So they will likely remain open even if there is a spike but they will just put in more safety measures to try and make sure that they can not only remain open, but also be able to turn a profit as well. The exhibition sector, and particular AMC, are under pressure to bring customers back to cinemas. Prior to corona, there was a great deal of consolidation in the exhibition space, much of it made possible by debt financing. AMC's decision to acquire rivals such as Odeon Cinemas, UCI Cinemas, and Carmike left it heavily leveraged with more than $5 billion in debt. In recent filings, AMC acknowledged that the coronavirus pandemic could push it into bankruptcy. Aaron expressed confidence that the theater chain would be able to avoid Chapter 11 and would be able to to have large enough revenue to service its debt obligations, but that is going to be very much contingent on the success of this reopening plan, having obviously the knowledge that they are going to have to reduce capacity in many places at to at you know at the very most 50% capacity in some locations, like in California, 20% capacity. It's going to be interesting to see if they're able to actually remain. Um, solvent at that time and to remain profitable at that time because as I've mentioned previously having worked at an AMC the theater chain makes money through concessions and if you are going to limit how many people can go and how many people can be fit inside a theater and you cap it off at 20 30 50 percent the important thing that you have to remember is that that's assuming you get a hundred percent of that 20 to 30 percent let's say you have 10 total theaters but you only allow two of them to be open and you say oh we can be profitable with those two theaters that means we could be profitable with those two theaters being at full capacity. You see how it doesn't quite work when you actually break down the numbers in that way? Because remember, they do make money off concessions. And that's why I'm glad to hear that the AMC CEO has said that they're not going to force any of the guests coming into the theater to wear a mask. I know that Cinemark has said something similar. And from what I've read from Regal, they are also going in the same direction as well. And it's, I think, a good thing because... They do not make any money off of the tickets that they give. They make money off of concessions. And if they were going to basically force their guests to wear a mask, one, it definitely pushes a lot of people from wanting to go to the theater because no one wants to wear a mask for two hours, two and a half hours, depending on what the film is, especially if you wear glasses and it's constantly fogging you up. I mean, people don't want to wear a mask in public for the most part anyway. So try to get them sit down trying to relax in a you know in a reclining seat having to wear a mask for an entire film it's just not going to look pretty and also the other caveat is that if you have to wear a mask the whole time then how do you eat popcorn how do you get drinks which means you don't buy it which means they don't make any money which means that the theater yeah it might be showing movies yeah people might be going but you're not only going to be then at that point promoting more people to bring their own food which lord knows they can't do because they make no money off of that but also you're essentially signing the death warrant for any major theater chain because at that point, they will be operating in the red, and they can't just continue to borrow money from people. And even then, there's really a lot of question marks about how much money the government's even giving some of these organizations. Remember, these organizations chose to close. They were essentially forced there, you know, right? Their, their hand was essentially forced for them to have to shut their windows down for service, you know? And so with that in mind... I do, again, it's one of the few times that I'm actually okay with, you know, government giving and assisting in the situation because it's a company that, through no fault of their own, had to shut down operations. Now, only, of course, do I think that it should be given for them to be able to remain operational or to get themselves back on their feet and not to go towards any prior, right, prior to COVID, any prior instances like with AMC, they were obviously already in the red. I don't think any money by the government, by the American people should go towards them. But 
With all that being said, I am very excited to see that AMC Theaters, the largest theater chain, the place that has the most locations near me, has indeed set a date. So again, 400, 450 of the 600 theaters across the United States will be open on July 15th, with the rest of them reopening slowly over time over the next couple of weeks after that with the goal of all theaters being open by the time not only Mulan comes out on July 24th, though that I think is definitely subject to change, but at the very least by July 31st when Tenet is set to be released in theaters. But what are your thoughts about this news? Are you excited? Do you have an AMC near you? Are you excited that movies are finally going to be starting to come back to you? As I mentioned previously, there is a local theater chain. It's called like a UEC. That's about 30 minutes away from me. And actually just got a crop of new movies, including one of my all-time favorites, Back to the Future, on the screen. So I'm definitely planning to try and make a trip. Uh, probably not. I was going to plan this week, but things just got in the way. Had a lot of doctor's appointments and things like that. So hopefully next week I'm able to make a trip work because I would love to do a vlog experience for you guys to show you the theater, to show you what these local theaters are doing, and also to see what kind of crowds we're looking at because this could go one of two ways. Either people are going to be so, you know, ramped up from having to stay home and, and not being able to have gone to the theater that they're going to rush out to the theater and everything's going to be great. Or the flip side of that, people are going to be nervous because even though there's going to be these new cleaning measures where they're going to be actually cleaning the seats between screens, right? They're actually going to be disinfecting it, or at least they're supposedly going to. That might be enough to bring some people back, but it also might not be enough. And some people might want to wait off a little bit longer, even though they might be excited for films like Tenet for not only a larger f a slate of new films to be coming out, but also for things to have calmed down. But let me know your thoughts about this and anything I talked about in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe. It helps out a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless. And now a huge shout out to all of my June Patreon members, Albertus Magnus, Animation Commentator, Brian P., David Bobrizic, Dion, Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father, Frank the Tank and the Shawhan Wiener Dog Clan, Harold Francis, the Hunk of Chunky, Funky Monkey, Inflamed Wood, It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jeffrey Toon, uh, Kenneth Cameo, Lady T, Laura Story, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mike Jackson, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, Orange Hat Reviews, Outpost Dyer, Out of Step with Reality, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benton, Tina Bojan, The DJD Show, and Tina B. And also to my subscribe star members, Edgardo Martinez, John B., Perpetual Punster, Robert Revo, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, G2Cool99, Darkstar57, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., US 888209 Fast, Dean Heiss, Harold Francis, J. Rod, the Beer Guru, and also Nebanon G. Adams and ZK Man, and Jonathan Carney, and Jacob Juice. Thank you all so much for being a member of Patreon and Subscribestar. Um, and seriously, it really does mean a lot. Helps keeps the light on. Helps me able to do things like the giveaways for my $5 and up backers on Patreon and Subscribestar. And also be able to put more stuff into the actual channel itself, uh, including upgrading uh, different components, whether it be webcams, microphones, things like that. All of that helps to support it. And it really does mean a lot. So thank you all so very much. Please, if you want to have your name shouted out or look at any of the other perks which include things like indeed being having access to exclusive 4k digital giveaways every single month and also an exclusive podcast hosted on patreon subscribe star and also YouTube memberships as well at the $10 and up level featuring John the Flick Pig Flickinger. Please check all of those things out in the description of this video. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day and as always, God bless.